on this bright, sun, sunny first day of spring as we meet the equinox. Help us feel your balance. Respond to your light and follow where you lead. Speak, your people are listening. Amen. Our first scripture this morning comes from the prophet Jeremiah, the 31st chapter. Listen and see what the prophet might be saying to you this morning. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors, where I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to one another, know the Lord. For they shall know all, they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. I want to check in. Can you still hear me? Thank you. And our gospel lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of John, the 12th chapter. Now, among those that went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, the voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
the phrase out of the Gospel of John that has been staying with me, coming back to me, occupying my heart and mind this week, is the line saying, unless a grain of wheat falls into the, into the earth and dies, it remains a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Any of you who are gardeners know that this is true. When Jan and I repotted the Easter bulbs from last year, hyacinth and tulips, many of them had multiplied. And where there had been a single flower, there were now many. Wheat multiplies, flowers multiply, people multiply. Part of the reason that this particular verse has been staying with me is because this week is the anniversary of Bishop Oscar Romero's death in El Salvador. Some of you know this story. At this point, it's an old story. It's decades old at this point. He was a Salvadoran priest who often uh, towed the line of the official Roman Catholic Church that sided with the government against the poor people in their country, against people who were targeted for violence and disappearance, assassination. He had something of um, a revelation. He came to understand the way in which God was with those who were impoverished and those who were persecuted, those who suffered. And so he stood alongside them. He companioned them. He lifted up the plight of the compañeros, the farmers, the poor folks. who are just trying to live, plant their crops, raise their families, care for their communities. Oscar Romero was assassinated during worship while he stood at the communion table, breaking and blessing the bread sharing the cup, the cup of the covenant, the cup of the renewed covenant. God's covenant promises come down to us across generations and eons. The first covenant was in Genesis. From the beginning, God has promised to be our God, that we might be God's people. And each time we have broken, the covenant, God renews it again and again. God's promises are sure, even when ours fail. This particular text has been with me, these words of covenant, when I hear a pronouncement from the Vatican this week. that proclaims to be faithful, but is so harmful, is so hurtful, that presumes to say some people's love is sin. And that is not what I read in scripture. I read this gospel to say, Jesus comes to save all of us and that the covenant is written in our hearts because God loves us, because God is part of all of us, because we are connected one to another in the family of God and the body of Christ. This week, I have had the opportunity to proclaim my faith, profess my belief, in the way we are each and everyone made in the image of God. Every one of us, every one of us made in the image of God. 
these truths that I claim as a Presbyterian, as a child of God, as kin to all of you, came home to me when I saw news out of Atlanta, a place that was my home for three years, a place where I went to seminary, a place where I did my master's thesis in biblical scriptures, where I studied the way our scriptures can distinguish us and unite us. I thought about the covenant that God promises to write on our hearts when I found out that the shooter was Christian. This is not the way God would have us live. Our stories, our history, as people of faith, call us to do better. Call us deeper into covenant relationship that recognizes not just the humanity of every other person, but the image of God in every other person. To recognize the way that each person is loved by God. Just like you, just like me, just like us. In John's gospel, the Greeks have come. They want to meet, see Jesus. The Greeks aren't Jews. They have a different faith tradition. But they want to see Jesus. And so the disciples come to ask him. And Jesus offers this rather mysterious answer. About our self-interest in trying to preserve our own life or the way in which we love others and share what we have and who we are for one another's sake. Jesus says, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to me. Jesus is God's renewed covenant. Jesus is God's promise fulfilled that we are loved. We are loved. So, in this space, I want to remember Oscar Romero. and Soon Chung Park, Hyung Chung Grant, Soon Cha Kim, Young A Yu, Xiao J Tan, Jiao Yo Feng, Delaney Ashley Young, and Paul Andre Michels. I want us to remember members of the Korean Presbyterian Church here in Springfield. I want us to remember the Asian and Asian American members of our own congregations and our own families. I want us to remember the ways in which discrimination against one group parallels the discrimination against another and our call to love one another, not hate, to recognize the way God's covenant promises are fulfilled and Jesus calls all people, lifts all people up. In whatever ways this week may have carried pain for you, may your broken hearts be bound up. In whatever ways this week inspired anger, may it be righteous.
in whatever ways you feel called to live more deeply into God's covenant, may we go together. I am blessed by each of you and grateful for God's presence amongst us, for these connections, for covenant, for the way that Jesus lifts us all. Thanks be to God. Amen.